reception it's miss fraser here so i have um got a book that i would like to read for you all it is called the lonely giraffe so you can see there we've got a really sad giraffe i wonder what it's about so let's read it can you see it i'll move up a little bit so the jungle animals were really quite a friendly bunch Every day, the cockatoos were first to shake their feathers and wake up the other animals. The elephants would trumpet, Good morning! And the snakes would hiss, Hello! Even the grumpy lion managed a friendly growl. All the animals met near the river for breakfast every morning to discuss the jungle news. Everyone took their turn to speak, but no one listened to the giraffe. Oh, look. The giraffe was just too tall. By the time he had spread his spindly legs and lowered his head to the ground, the other animals had lost interest. So the giraffe would lift his head and his long neck and wander off. He spent all day with his head in the trees, eating the sweetest leaves. He didn't realise that the birds and the monkeys that lived in the trees were frightened of his large head suddenly appearing in the treetops. Or that the small animals on the ground ran away because they were scared of being trodden on. In the end, the lonely giraffe didn't bother trying to speak to anyone. He moved from tree to tree, munching on the leaves, and the jungle creatures went on avoiding him. That was how it went on for the whole of the long, dry summer. When the rainy season came, the large animals headed for the higher ground. The small creatures sheltered in the bushes near the river, and the monkeys took over the trees. The rain poured down for days. The jungle animals became frightened that the river would burst its banks. Don't worry, said the alligator. I'll carry you to safety in my big, wide jaws. But the animals did not trust him. Would you trust this alligator to carry you across the river in there? Because I certainly wouldn't. As the river rose, the jungle creatures became more frightened. They huddled together beneath the bushes. And no one heard the distant roar until the leopard pricked up his ears. And nobody could think what it was. The giraffe, however, looked over the heads of the animals on the ground. His big eyes widened like saucers and he slowly bent his spotted neck until the worried creatures could hear him. Look, he looks ever so worried, doesn't he? The river is flooding, said the giraffe in a surprisingly squeaky voice. A wall of water is racing down the valley. What can we do? It's too late to run away. We'll all be drowned, squeaked the mouse. Or the alligator will eat us. Climb up here, called the monkey from the treetops. The river won't reach the high branches. Hurry, squawked the cuckoo. I can see the water coming. The jungle animals raced to the trees, but some of them could not climb up the slippery tree trunks. Their hooves and tails were just not made for climbing. Oh, look. Do you think you could climb that tree? Because I couldn't. The roaring water rushed closer and the animals shivered with fright. Then the giraffe had an idea. He bent his knees and spoke to the animals. Climb on my back, he squeaked in his high voice. The water is almost here. The river was lapping around the creatures. The monkeys jumped up onto the giraffe's neck and then called the others. The hairy warthog was next to carefully climb on 
and one by one the animals helped each other to safety. Look, they're all climbing up his neck to get away from the water. Then the giraffe straightened his knees as the water flooded the jungle. He stretched up his long neck and the last few animals hurried to the branches, helped by the chattering monkeys. The water washed around the giraffe's strong legs and sprayed the animals in the tree. Then the river rushed on. The water slowly sank back to the ground and the sun came out from behind the clouds. The giraffe poked his head up onto the high branches and the animals slid down his back onto the damp earth. From that day on, the giraffe was never lonely again. The jungle animals would wait for the giraffe to lower his head and join in the conversation. The birds and the monkeys in the trees were no longer afraid of the giraffe's big head. The cockatoos would find the sweetest leaves for the brave giraffe and the elephants would trumpet, Good morning! And the snakes would hiss, Hello! And the grumpy lion would pretend to growl before falling.